Yeah, well, welcome, Becky. And um, yeah, would you like to sort of introduce yourself? Tell us a little bit about you. Yeah, so um, I'm 47 and I was diagnosed last year. Um, my story begins, I went to um, the opticians July last summer. Um, I was having issues with my vision and I'd probably had them for quite a few months, but ignored them um, because I suffer with a lot of migraine. Um, the optician thought I had a cataract. They provided, I used to wear contact lenses. They gave me a massive lens to try to see if they could help with my vision. Um, and they referred me to my local um, hospital. That took five weeks. And in that process, in that time, um, my vision had deteriorated considerably. Um, they thought, they told me I had a detached retina. Um, and then said, come back in a couple of days, well, you'll need surgery. And when I saw another consultant, he said, no, you've got a large mass, you need to go to more fields. So by that point, um, I started to do a lot of reading. Um, I'm a healthcare professional, I'm a physio, and my sister's a specialist nurse. And we knew um, that it was large and probably my only treatment choice was going to be a nuclear nation. So, um, it wasn't a shock when I went for my full assessment at Moorfields where they do all the tests and then diagnose you in in one day. Um, yeah, so I had my eye out in October last year. Gosh. So, yeah, coming up to... to yeah, nearly a year. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I, I was just going to say, we haven't kind of touched on that initial aspect and you know I, I remember as a obviously family member when my dad had nucleation it, it can come as a shock and uh, you kind of don't know what to expect um how are you doing with your eye now um you know and sort of adjusting to, to monovision and everything so I because I had already started to lose my vision over the summer it wasn't a big thing I um was still managing to cope and then had to stop work just before in the September time because I couldn't use I couldn't read on my laptop anymore there wasn't a position where I could sit forward or sit back to focus and I couldn't drive um, so that was really difficult and actually I was looking forward to getting my eye out because um, my vision was so distorted mm -hmm. and then once once it had been removed I could get used to living with mono vision it just felt so much easier to have it out actually Okay. Because I I couldn't I tried eye patches and I just felt like I couldn't get on with them. They it felt like they took over half my face, and I even tried taping my eye, but it it just it didn't work. So actually, it was a bit of a relief. Um, yes, it was. It was a relief. Yeah. And um, they told me it wouldn't hurt, and actually, <laughs> it did hurt, but only for the pain was quite severe for a couple of weeks, and then it then it was fine okay and sort of a, you know after that initial treatment they use a conformer don't they yes. can you sort of explain what yes, that's so like I, for people when you sort of like first come home or when yeah, you first so come I, was, I was really lucky they gave me a blue conformer so okay. it didn't it didn't I didn't have this big wasn't it wasn't a clear one so I didn't look like I had a red up massive red eye it was just looked like a big sparkly eye so it did look odd but it didn't I didn't look really weird and I wasn't I wasn't that self-conscious of it um Good. I've got a teenage daughter and my um my next door neighbor's daughter paints nails and she'd offered to do my nails just because she was being lovely and I thought um, I won't go because it was quite a personal thing where you're very close to someone and I mm. thought you know she's young I don't know what to do my my 15 year old daughter told me not to be so silly <laughs> just go mum and then you know that was kind of I wasn't bothered I just did everything um I was going out I wasn't I wasn't really conscious of um anyone seeing me with the conformer in mm. that's good isn't it I think there's well hopefully now there's a bit more sort of acceptance around the world actually we are all different we're all got sort of different quirks about ourselves yeah. um, and actually I wasn't, it's I wasn't conscious I think the only thing I would say like the you I still get very tired. I was very tired after my surgery mm. and I just um, learned to accept if I feel really tired, I have a little sleep and then I'm fine to keep going again. Yeah. Because so, I has to accommodate um, and learn, learn to just 
have one eye. Yeah, and I can, I can imagine that takes a good few months, doesn't it? Uh, I know um, when we've done Eye Patch Day, you know, our, our sort of awareness campaign, we'll put a patch on. So things like pouring a drink, you, yes. really, you know, you do have to sort of focus that, but that yeah. much more, don't you? And so, yeah. And before my diagnosis, my, the main thing was bumping my head into cupboards because I couldn't um, different, have the depth perception. perception. Yeah. And I, th I definitely don't think you're alone there. I think, you know, we do hear of <laughs> different people falling over, tripping over sort of different yeah. things. Um, and um, I'm very, I'm, I'm careful on stairs. Um, yeah. yeah. And and obviously crossing the road, if there's an option to um, go the safe way, I will do that instead. I don't just walk out into the road anymore. <laughs> yeah, probably not. <laughs> not a good idea. So, <laughs> and for... Um, for night time, um, I've got a teenager and she was still doing sports, so I'd have to go and pick her up. Um, I bought a white ski jacket, so I knew I just felt gave me more confidence for my visibility at night mm. rather than just wearing a black coat. Yeah. It made me feel, um, yeah, like I'm more likely to be seen. And I've heard actually from people that if they're sort of walking down the road with somebody, they like to have that person on the side where they, they have less you know no vision yeah um, well, the, well that swings in two roundabouts because sometimes if I'm going for a walk and someone's on that side it's like yeah. I'm by myself because I don't see them okay so um I would change sides so you can you know you still kind of see them in your periphery and you're having a conversation because otherwise it's like someone it's like being on the phone really where you're of like course. you're not seeing them otherwise so it depends on the situation of what side yeah. you walk on with someone. And like how many other people are around you as well. Yeah. But, you know, yeah. if there's nobody that's um, sort of about, then I can imagine that being a, a lot yeah. easier. Because um, um, in, in the early days, if I was walking somewhere new, I'd hold someone's arm because it was hard enough to work out where I was going and look around. And just holding someone was um, made it just much easier. Mm. And you mentioned, obviously, you were working um, yeah. when this happened. Um, how how was that? And, you know, was your experience sort of being a physiotherapist, did that help in any way? So um, in August last year, I'd um, I just successfully interviewed for a new role. So it was I was going to be, uh, previously I was lead physio for community stroke rehab. And then I was going to go and do a clinical lead role. And then obviously I was diagnosed and a few days before my op, my manager phoned up to say, what do you want to do? And I said, I don't know. I'm going to have my eye oh. out. So I, after that, I knew very quickly that I would gonna have to make a decision about what direction I was going to at work. So in November, I went in and uh, had to make the decision and say, I, I, this, I'm not going to be able to do this role, um, which took a weight off my shoulders. And um since then I went back to work in January which was only three months after my op I know it's quite soon um, but I started working from home and they were really supportive and understanding I was really lucky I disclosed everything um, to my manager um, they referred me to occupational health which was also very um, supportive and now I've moved um, in a different direction um, I'm doing vestibular clinic which is um your inner ear and dizziness but I feel having this experience gives me a lot of more understanding because I know about eyesight issues um and it's it's been a bit of a roller coaster I um I can't I can't do everything I want to but there's lots of things I can do yeah and it's still very early days isn't it only you know it's it's a lot's happened in a, in a short yeah, space and, of time um, I um, found Ocumel quite soon after my diagnosis and I had um, counselling, which was incredibly helpful because it just helped me with um, the letting go of work. And I, uh, yeah. Yeah. We can be very sort of tunnelled visioned, I think, you know, yeah. especially when it's jobs that we and love. There's so many positives that come out, out of it. I... Um, don't work full time anymore. I work three days, but over four, so it's four short days. And then mm -hmm. if when I come home, I um, can have a sleep if I need to. And then 
and I'm ready to get up again and cook dinner for everybody. Um, and I'm, it makes, they get more out of me. I think if I tried to fit it all into one day, the drive home would be horrible and I'd just have to go straight to bed. It just wouldn't be very nice. So that does work. And I've get, I get a sense um, that you've got an incredible network of people around you as well. Um, yeah, I was, um, I mean, I wasn't, I told everyone and my family have been really supportive and um, Occupel have been amazing and I've been using the Facebook and um, I've had quite a few friends that have done fundraising, but which has been lovely as well. So uh, my friend did the Brighton Marathon, which means a day out in Brighton. Um, and my another friend and work colleague did the Ride 500 in London. So that was a nice little trip in London. Um, whenever I've been for hospital appointments in London, we've always tried to do something nice after it. Mm. Um, so kind of make a day of it or you like you go out for a cup of tea or coffee or we one day when I've been for my prosthesis appointment, we went to the National Gallery afterwards. Um, just little things to not make it just about the diagnosis. Yeah. That's it. I think you do need that normality, don't you? So it's not just all about the treatment that you've had. You know, you're still you. Yes. Aren't and you? And you just made it a much nicer a day. Um, and it's, yeah, taking it off that. Yeah. Well, do I mean, I asked the, the other guys, you know, if there was sort of a tip that... Um, you'd say to other patients of, you know, if, if they were going through this, is there anything that you'd wish you'd known or you thought, oh, actually, I wasn't expecting that, um, anything like that at all? No, I think I was quite, I was quite well informed um, because I'd already done quite a lot of reading and it wasn't yeah. a shock and it was big. So I wasn't, I wasn't emotionally attached to the eye. It, it didn't function, <laughs> didn't work at all. I had no vision in it, so I was happy to have it out. I suppose the only thing I would say is rest if you need to and plan that into your day. Yeah. And try and do something nice, have a little walk every day, if, or you know, do whatever you enjoy. Well, hopefully, hopefully you've got something nice planned for this afternoon. Um, <laughs> you know, and obviously you'd be welcome to stay for, for the entire conference. Oh, I'm definitely staying. Um, yeah, but um, well, in, in that case, this evening, I think yeah. we should all be, all be doing something nice for ourselves. Yeah. Um, Beck, uh, Rebecca, did you um, drive before or after? Yes, uh, yes, this? so I drive. Um, um, and I, I'm, not, I'm not a big fan of um, driving new places, but as long as I've got um, a, like a co-pilot, okay. um, that makes it much easier. So driving to work and back is fine now. I'm familiar places if it's unfamiliar it's really diff i find it very difficult to look at the sat nav and know which lane i'm supposed to be in if it's okay. all really new but if someone's saying oh middle lane or yeah, that's fine yeah it's yeah. A, I, I, it, it must take more concentration mustn't it um particularly when it's somewhere new um yes it sort of takes a bit more time yeah yeah, yeah. No, that's um yeah. And I've heard from people that sometimes actually after treatment, and I don't know if this is for all treatments, but um, where, I don't know, if you were to look out the window and you might just normally turn to the left, you know, uh, look to the left, that some people find that actually turning their head and looking to the left can help just while, you know, that one eye, the other eye is still healing. Um, so I don't know if that's something that you ever found sort of useful or. Yeah, you have not. to turn. Yeah, you just sort of turn <laughs> you your head to, rather I have to than. Turn my head. Yeah. If there's nothing over there. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I, I asked my daughter this morning, is there is there anything you think I should say or share? And, and she said, no, you can do everything. Absolutely. So, um, yeah, I think. It, and in between, um, I've had loads of hospital appointments this year um, because I am high risk and they're investigating every little thing. But in between time, life is you carry on because life carries on doesn't it and as long as you're doing nice things it's all good brilliant thank well, you thank, yeah thank you so much for for um sort of sharing it all this you know especially because it is early days for you um so yeah really appreciate sort of getting your thoughts and how you found it and, and hope other people have, have found it useful um 
brilliant. Well, thanks again, Rebecca. And yeah, more than much, so you can stay for, for, for the entire day, but definitely do something enjoyable tonight is our, our, our take home, I think, from this one. Um, lovely. Thank you.